Hey guys, welcome to the Unit 12 Notes, Part 1, where we're going to cover the structure of the mitochondria, part of its function, and we're also going to get into the first step of cellular respiration, which as you can see is the basis for Unit 12. <clears throat> so let's get started with uh, Objective 1 here, relate the structure of the mitochondria to the events of cellular respiration. Uh, starting off with this first word, pronounced criste, and actually the job of this part of the mitochondria, and we'll see what it is in a second. Mito the uh, cristae are just the folds that are inside the mitochondria where electron transport takes place. And actually, this is very similar to the thylakoid membrane that we just saw in photosynthesis. Moving on to the matrix. A matrix is a watery environment where the Krebs cycle takes place and it is similar to the stroma of the chloroplasts that we just saw in photosynthesis. And last up, the intermembrane space. And that is the space between inner and outer membrane where protons are pumped. Remember protons, if you want, you can abbreviate H+, plus. just like in photosynthesis, we're going to see a lot of things that are very similar from our last unit to this unit. Some of the things very similar, some of them a complete opposite, but still similar. Alright, so there's our picture of the mitochondrion. Uh, it's got a little bit more detail than we're going to get into, but some things I just want to point out. Or right, let's go ahead and label all of this thing first. And then I will uh, make a point to mention some important parts. Uh, these first things are, we're going to talk about ATP synthase again. So you can see there's ATP synthase particles. Next thing that you're looking at, moving on to the left there is the matrix. You can see it kind of points to that watery environment inside the mitochondrion. Next up is the intermembrane space. And you can see there it's between the outer membrane, which appears in kind of a reddish brown, and the inner membrane, which is a really bright yellow. So it's that space between those two membranes. And here are these guys, which are pretty important, the cristae, and these are again the folds of that actual inner membrane. So notice all these kind of like zigzag parts. Those are all the folds that are actually intermembrane folded up really tightly to create more surface area for more electron transport chain. You also notice in there there are ribosomes. Some things we're not going to be too concerned with. Granules, mitochondrial DNA, right there. Something to notice that we have uh, already talked about cells and bacteria a long time ago, but this mitochondrial DNA is actually circular, just like a plasmid that we saw in bacteria. This is mitochondrial DNA that you inherit from actually just your mother. There's a lot of research going on with that, and there's actually a lot of work being done with mitochondrial DNA, but something very interesting. It's kind of a telltale sign for scientists that kind of shows that mitochondria are likely, were likely once a single-celled organism that were engulfed by eukaryotes to do the energy systems, particularly the cellular respiration that we're going to talk about in this unit. So again, that circular DNA that we only saw in bacteria, we're going to see again in mitochondria, but we're not going to talk about it too much besides this. And then, last up, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And again, the inner membrane are made up of those folds called cristae, and that's where a lot of what we're going to see in the uh, next uh, few notes, we're going to see a lot of that stuff coming up. Alright, so there's our mitochondrion. Again, the most important parts we've labeled up top, locations of processes. Inner membrane is where the ETC takes place. We'll see that when we get to that section of the notes, but something that wouldn't hurt to add here. Inner membrane is where the ETC takes place. And it's very similar to the ETC that we saw in photosynthesis. The matrix is where the Krebs cycle takes place. 
the intermembrane space, again, that area just between these two membranes right here, the space in between there is where protons are going to be pumped, which is going to be important for making ATP. The cristae are the folds of the intermembrane, again, where the ETC is taking place. Moving on to our next slide here, the function of cellular respiration and its importance to living things. Cellular respiration is important because us and all eukaryotic cells are getting energy in the form of ATP, the same ATP we've talked about in photosynthesis. This is where we get our energy from, cellular respiration, done in the mitochondria. We'll talk about the details in just a bit. Glucose, same glucose that we saw in photosynthesis, so probably something you already know the definition for. This is the sugar made by photosynthesis or made in photosynthesis that is broken down to get energy from. This is a very important food source for life on Earth. Thank you, plants. And last here, number two, ATP, the same ATP we talked about in photosynthesis. This is the cellular energy molecule, adenosine triphosphate. We're going to spend more time in this unit talking, talking about how it's made, particularly by ATP synthase. And you'll see that when we get there. Number three, the overall equation for cellular respiration is going to be very familiar because it is exact opposite of photosynthesis besides this part right here. We have oxygen going in, glucose going in, thank you plants, water is coming out, CO2 is coming out. Again, if you breathe out, breathe out on the uh, school bus in middle school and make stupid little designs on the window, this is what you're breathing out. H2O and CO2, and we'll see exactly where that's coming out inside of our bodies and inside the mitochondria. And the most important part in this whole unit is that we are making ATP, and actually there are 36 ATP made for every glucose molecule, so a pretty high amount when you consider just one single glucose. Next up, we're going to talk about the first step in cellular respiration, and that is glycolysis. And from now on, you probably just want to abbreviate CR for cellular respiration. So the first step in cellular respiration is called glycolysis. It takes glucose and produces ATP and a molecule that's going to move on to the next phase or the next step, and that is this guy, pyruvate. The location of glycolysis is in the cytoplasm, and a long time ago last semester when we talked about cells, we said the cytoplasm was the site of chemical reactions. Well, here is probably the number one most important chemical reaction happening in the cytoplasm, and that is glycolysis. And last up at number four here, pyruvate, also known as pyruvic acid. This is the molecule made in glycolysis that proceeds to the next step. Krebs cycle. This is step two, which we'll get to in the next set of notes. And I've included a diagram here that kind of gives you a really good idea of the very basic. Glycolysis is like a 12-step process that we're not going to go through all the details, but it is important to understand what's actually happening and how glycolysis proceeds into the next step, which is the Krebs cycle. And we'll talk about those details a little bit later on to the end of this of the notes. But here you can see is the mitochondrial membrane. So this is what's separating the mitochondria inside from outside. Outside meaning the cytoplasm. And again, this is where the glycolysis is taking place. The result of glycolysis, most important, is the pyruvic acid or pyruvates. They are going to move into the mitochondrion and provide the carbon source eventually for the Krebs cycle to get going. And the Krebs cycle is similar to the dark reactions that we saw in photosynthesis. So eventually those carbons from uh, pyruvates are going to be, 
get turned into something else, and we saw this kind of stuff in photosynthesis. That's the carbon source for the Krebs cycle. So that's going to do it for part one of the notes, just kind of an intro getting into the basics. In the next set of notes, we'll get into Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. We'll also see fermentation, which is actually how prokaryotes and things like our muscle cells are getting energy uh, without the presence of oxygen.